Good morning. I'm going to pull this down so we can have a little more flexibility. How is everybody? We hope you are all doing well. Um, sorry, I'm unwrapping the camera cord. Um, I've got Robin right here. She's ready to pop. Um, so right here we've got Missy's, Missy's puppies. They're going to be eight weeks old tomorrow, which means pickup week is starting and they get to go home. And so Stashi Boy is going to be our first going home tomorrow. And so, um, you know, what's on our agenda is with everybody still needs their um, second vaccine. Um, and then we, um, everybody's got to get their microchips still. We don't let a puppy leave our house before being microchipped. Um, and then in the morning, they also have a, an appointment over at the vet clinic to be to be given the all clear to go home. Yeah. Who's a good boy, Dexter? Are you guys excited? Um, but over on the labor front, there's Robin Dog. Robin Dog. There she is. <laughs> um, so Robin, we are nearly certain. Hey there, Lisa. Good morning. Afternoon. Good morning, morning, morning. It's, afternoon. it's morning. Um, hey there, Amber. Um, so Robin, this morning, she came and woke me up. Um, she wasn't in bed. She came to my side of the bed on the floor and she was panting so hard that that was what woke me up was the sound of her panting. And she was just like, she just was in distress. She seemed, um, like I hopped out of bed. I didn't know if a puppy was coming out and was like in a bad position. She just seemed like something wasn't right. Uh, and so I, I did all the things. I, um, asked her if she wanted to go outside. So I accompanied her outside. Pom pom. Hey, Dad, can you grab pom pom and put her outside so she's not barking at me? Oh. Oh. Um, oh. And so I took her outside, and she she pooped a lot. She pottied. Um, she has been um, just really anxious and uncomfortable in general. Following Dad. <laughs> um, hold on, Pom Pom. She's, um, so she was so uncomfortable this morning. I wanted to kind of see where she was at. So I took her temperature and her temperature had indeed dropped from yesterday. It was, um, 99.9 this morning. It was 99.5 and, um, it was 99.5 at six o'clock this morning. And then when I retook it at nine o'clock this morning, it was 99.1, um, and when Robin has a temp drop, her temp drops and she goes into labor, like, like, you know, with the drop of a hat. Um, you know, Myra, it took her a few days, was her first litter. Um, her body is still kind of figuring out what to do. Robin, um, her body knows exactly what to do. And so her temp drop is almost, it's one thing she usually has it like right before her puppies are born. Um, Oh, I think May just got home. Kids have a half day today. Um, so um, we're going to be streaming Robin's delivery. And so since she's so close um, and then she kind of goes pretty quickly, I'm going to set up the link for her delivery stream. And then as she gets closer, um, we'll keep you guys updated. Um, and, um, you know, and so we'll let you know, like, as we get closer, when we're starting it and kind of where she's at. But um, we're really excited because Robin's pretty uncomfortable. In fact, we were looking at pictures and video from her from her last litter uh, just over a year ago. And her belly, is big, it, it was smaller on her last litter when she had seven puppies. So you can see. Hey, sweet pie. Hey, school's over. Why do I keep getting on three scammers? What's up, Robin? You want to go back in? What did you say about seven puppies? I just, um, Dad and I were looking at the stream that you had did when Robin day before she had her puppies last year. And her belly is a lot smaller. Not a lot smaller, but it was quite smaller. And she was pregnant then with six puppies and Mr. Orange. And so we're wondering if maybe she might have six healthy puppies.
Good morning, Linda. I know it's afternoon, but I'm a morning. I gotta say good morning. Good morning, Lisa. Lisa Crane. Letty, how are you? Letty, we are always thinking about you. I hope you're feeling okay. I know that um I know that um, conditions like yours, you know, every day can be diff very different and you never really quite know how it's gonna be. So uh, we're always thinking of you and hope you're doing at least okay. And then if it can't be great, we hope you're doing okay. Um, Coffee, how are you? Good morning. Hey there, Paula. Shelly, good morning to you. Starlin, I can't wait to meet you tomorrow. I you can't wait to meet Sasha. Can hey, I meet what, you? Why are you coming over tomorrow? Um, just after watching. Good morning, Sue. Aw, Starlin, I bet you are. I know we got kind of off schedule with FaceTime last like week and a half. So I'm really glad that you're able to come get him right at eight weeks since we're delivering puppies today. I know we're not doing FaceTime today. Hi, puppies. You guys are such sweet puppies. Um, if any of you missed it, Myra's puppy. Oh, Myra's update, Dara. Um, so Myra's puppies are all doing really well. Um, she had, um, so she delivered five puppies. Um, one was a stillbirth. He hid, it was really clear to us that he passed away a couple weeks prior. Um, and if you were watching the Remy stream yesterday, um, we delivered... We delivered Myra's puppies. Um, it was in the same room. So essentially her delivery was kind of, it was recorded. Um, the audio of it was recorded on Remy's stream. Um, but before the first puppy was born, there was a, a situation that we had never seen before. And this is one reason that we, um, we don't stream first deliveries um, live. Um, and there's just, there's, it's so often there is a weird hiccup that we haven't seen before. And it's not even necessarily related to a first time mom. It just seems to be this weird phenomenon that a first, first litter has something weird happen. But, um, so usually when a mom is in labor, as a puppy approaches the birth canal, um, you know, they're, so they're wrapped in two sacks. There's one sack that goes around them is around the puppy and kind of encapsulates the cord. And then there's another sack that kind of goes, um, that goes around, it goes around them and like has some other squishy stuff. And, um, and so as the puppy is approaching the birth canal with their bodies, they're pushing a lot of fluid through ahead of them. And so before a puppy starts crowning, first we'll see like a water balloon the sac begins coming through and it'll fill up with amniotic fluid. And frequently that sac will pop, but that's okay because the puppy is still, there's another sac around the puppy. Um, so that sac will pop and, um, and then a puppy will come through. And if it doesn't pop, the puppy still will just come through right behind it. Well, so Myra was pushing and we were expecting a puppy to come through and then another sac appeared, which was really weird. So there were two sacs hanging. And, and so we want to be really careful that they didn't get popped because we want to keep track, you know, they're both two different puppies. And um, uh, I was getting a little concerned because that wasn't something we'd seen before. And we know that um, dogs have two uterine horns and the puppies come out from each horn, every other horn. And so they'll come out one side and then they'll come out the other side, come out the other side and then switch to the other side, just back and forth until all the puppies are out. And, um, but occasionally you can have very excited puppies who just want to go forward at the same time. And so I was worried that that was like what might be going on. And so I asked Drew to look it up and sure enough, he finds this graphic that, um, 
this image that kind of explains, you know, how dangerous this can be. And so we call the vet, um, and the vet basically says, you're being too anxious and paranoid. Give her some time and, um, you know, let's see if labor can just continue naturally. And we, we really like our vet because they are very conservative. Um, they're not quick to intervene if we don't have to. Um, and after what happened with Paris um, on New Year's, um, I feel like with, with Myra, I was just real quick to take her to the ER. Um, but Drew helped me calm down. And um, so as, as Myra's continuing, she's pushing some more, like her contractions pick back up again. And um, a third step appears. And I thought I was like, so I could understand two stacks with there being two horns. But when a third sack appeared, I thought like, like, this has got to be a joke. <laughs> this is, I like, it was, I was so, I wasn't, it was not what I was expecting. I was expecting at least a puppy to start appearing. So when that third sack appeared, I got really nervous. Um, I called the vet back to explain, cause if, you know, call back, you know, when, when, you should be seeing progress and you're not and that sort of thing. And so we called back, we explained. Um, and as I'm talking to her, that sack that had just come out, it's hanging right there, right, right outside the canal. And all of a sudden I see the puppy just shoot right into it. And it, it was the strangest birth I've ever seen because um, the sack kind of came out ahead of her. And as the sack was coming out, she was kind of going out into the sack. It was so fascinating. Um, but so that happened while I was on the phone with the vet. And so, of course, then, you know, we hung up and um, that puppy was very healthy. She's big. She's um, doing well. Um, and then so we kept going. She kept pushing. Another puppy approaches the birth canal and she delivers that puppy um, really without issue. Um, but again, that puppy it went past that sack again. We still have this sack and it still hasn't popped. We have this mystery sack. And it's the other thing is the sack is starting to like, it's starting to dry out on the outside. It's starting to, it doesn't look very good at this point either. Um, and so uh, then we start having a third puppy approach the canal. Now we only ever had, we only ever saw three sacks at most. So we're thinking that this puppy has got to be that sack. Wow. And um, uh, as that, um, as that puppy approaches, um, the sack pops, um, the puppy comes out and it is indeed that sack, that puppy. Um, however, that was the puppy that was the stillbirth. And we think what happened is, um, so for one, that puppy had passed away. Um, a couple weeks prior, he was not developed to term. Um, he was, I mean, he was mostly developed, but like his, his sex organs were about halfway in between, um, where they start and where they stop in development. Um, and so based on like gestational, how they grow in, in the woo, we, um, determined that he probably passed around six weeks gestation. Um, he was pretty big still. He was really long. Um, and so we think what happened is that um, he was the first puppy. And um, we got lucky because a lot of times if you have a puppy that passes away like that, they can oftentimes cork the 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 whole process. They'll cork the, the birth canal and the other puppies won't be able to get through. Um, because what seemed to happen with him is he was the first in line and he approached the birth canal, but you know how, when, um, if you're holding a baby on your hips, they're flexing and they're holding on to you. So you might be holding them and supporting all their weight, but they're also helping you by holding on to you and flexing their legs around you. Um, and kind of like resisting, um, not resisting you, but like resisting gravity. Um, and so we think what happened is this puppy not having, um, having this puppy having passed away, no longer had, you know, movement was no longer flexed. Um, and so the uterus can, can deliver puppies, can deliver ba human babies all on its own, just 
through contractions alone if you let it. Um, and um, so we're thinking that uh, her uterus was, was pushing the, the puppy forward, but because he was no longer with us, um, he didn't have that. He didn't have that flexion. He wasn't flexed and kind of helping to propel himself forward. Um, you know, the puppies, they wiggle, they move, they squirm. Um, and if he was just, um, if his body was really just nothing more than tissue at that point, um, as the other, as far as the other puppies are concerned, when it comes to them, he was just kind of, he was, he was really in the way, um, because he wasn't a puppy who was actively working his way out. He was just kind of um, there in the middle of the in the, in the middle of the line to to lead to exit, and um, so we think that the puppies were able to get through because um, because he had passed away at six weeks, and so he was a little bit smaller. Um, because one thing we did notice was that he was like really his body shape he was very narrow and very long but he was also very underdeveloped and so we think that um you know when since it had been a while um when the puppies were when myra's body was working the puppies through they were probably just you know slowly squeezing their way past because you know luckily that bag never popped because if his bag had popped if his bag had popped and it slipped off um, his fur would have started drying out. It would have been getting, um, having that Velcro effect that we talk about. Um, and it would have been much more difficult to deliver him. But um, luckily that bag stayed intact and the other puppies were able to pass right past him. And then when, when those two got past that were, um, were kind of getting in the way in the birth canal, once those two got past, then, then he was able to get through okay. And I think it's because her, the puppy behind him um, was very, very big. The, the puppy behind him was very, very big. So I think the puppy behind him almost kind of like pushed him through. Um, it was huge. The puppy behind him was coming out of the same uterine horn. And so that made sense to us. You know, he's coming directly from behind him as opposed to coming from the other horn and meeting in the middle. Um, coming from directly behind him, he was just pushed right out from that other puppy, kind of propelling him forward. Um, and so that's, um, I think that's why all of that happened the way it did. Um, another really rare scenario or situation, um, one of my other anxieties in terms of delivering puppies is, are like stillbirths because you have a litter of puppies and it's fine if the puppy is at the back of the litter. But if the puppy is mid litter or at the front, it can really complicate the delivery because you know, if they just pass during labor, then they're going to be a very big full term puppy. Um, if they're um, if they passed a while ago and they're smaller, well, you might have the issue of um, like decomposition and infection um, because that can infection is another issue or another concern when it comes to um, fetal demise with, with um, dogs. So um, that was something we were, when we were worried that Missy may have lost a puppy when she was pregnant. That was something that the vet um, helped us watch for was to make sure that, and uh, there wasn't, all the puppies were fine. Um, but. Uh, Far too sad. Poor Robin over here. She is hanging on. She's such a good girl. She's hanging on. Um, hey, bud. Uh, but, um, so my wrist delivery was the audio of it was entirely captured on any stream. And, um, after she had delivered the four, the three healthy ones, and then the, and the stillbirth, we weren't sure if she might be done. And so I brought the, the live stream over so that everybody could see the new puppies. Um, and sure enough, she did have another one in there. So um, we were, we did capture the the last puppy. Um, last puppy's delivery is at the end of Remy's live stream from yesterday. 
And so that was kind of nice to have that one caught on there. Um, the delivery of the one, because he had been passed away for so long, it was very graphic. Um, and so that's what I meant by um, this is why we're cautious to stream a first time mom's delivery because some weird things can happen. Um, Robin's first delivery, she had a puppy with something called anencephaly. Um, and that's when it's, it's one of the things that is actually caused by a deficient folic acid. Um, and that was when we, um, that was when we started giving, um, prenatal vitamins to our dogs. And that he'd never heard of giving prenatal vitamins to dogs, but we found some really good, um, vitamins from our supplier. And we noticed that, you go dead. We noticed that um, the litters that we gave prenatal vitamins for, um, when the puppies are born, they're born a lot with a lot more energy. And, um, you know, I guess it could be placebo effect just on our part, but um, puppies that, you know, are usually small and weak, they might still be small, but they are a lot stronger um, ever since we started those vitamins. Um, but so that was in Robin's first litter. She had that puppy with anencephaly. Um, and if you don't know what anencephaly is, it's kind of like the opposite of spina bifida. Spina bifida is when your spine doesn't close at the very bottom. Anencephaly is when your spine doesn't, your spinal column doesn't close at the very top. Um, and so babies with anencephaly will have a, a kind of a disfigured face um, because essentially because the top of their spinal cord is open um you know if they make it to delivery you know it's not sustainable with life or it's not it can't be sustained life cannot be sustained um but their heads will be very flat because they essentially their brains won't have developed and so um they don't really have much of a forehead, like just over their eyes, once you hit their eyes, then their heads kind of go back. And on the tops of their heads is where you'll see that spot of exposure where, um, where the spinal column did not close. And so like, if you look up, if you Google anencephaly, I don't recommend you do it if you have a weak stomach, I don't recommend it. Um, but they usually put hats on the babies to kind of cover that, that part of the disfigurement. Um, but it was it was real easy to spot what that puppy had just because babies with anencephaly have very um, distinct features, and um, the puppy that we had looked it was uh, like all the features that human infants have the puppy had like the way that his eyes looked it was really sad. Um, Robin had like tucked him under some blankets and she was like pawing at him and licking him and then crying at us as if to like say can you help him. Um, and so we had that kind of weird thing with Robin's delivery. And again, like it's not necessarily something that would be higher risk for a first delivery, but just still something kind of weird. Um, and then when the puppy was born, the stillbirth, um, it was just really graphic. The, the puppy's body was breaking down. And, um, when Myra went to no. grab the cord, the puppy's body was just, it was not in good shape. And um, we probably would have been, our, our YouTube probably would have gotten, our video would have been in trouble for graphic content because um, when Myra went to pull, went to like, when she went to tear his umbilical cord, his skin was so, um, it was so in such degraded. poor condition. It was degraded, it was so degraded that um, it essentially just broke. It didn't have the elasticity that healthy tissue has. Um, when she pulled on that cord, it just like everything, it just pulled, like it just, she just pulled the cord off of him. And so when she pulled the cord off of him, you know, the cord is attached to their intestines. And so when she pulled it all off, things just started coming out. And um, so when she made that puncture and, um, it was, oh, it was so graphic. I don't want to even want to, I don't want to describe it because it's just so icky. So I'm just going to stop it there. If you just want to use your imagination, um, 
when I, I went to hand the puppy to Drew and just handing the puppy to Drew after Myra made that, um, after she had made that little puncture, I guess you could say, just handing, I handed the puppy over to Drew and just that little bit of pressure from me holding the puppy kind of squished more things. It was, it was, ugh. it was really graphic. Um, and poor May, she looked like she was gagging, but she, she stuck through it and I can't believe she did. Um, she did not need to excuse herself, but, um, that was, it wasn't a difficult delivery, but it was our most graphic. Um, that was more graphic than the anencephaly baby. But, um, so that's why we don't do first time moms on, on the live streams. Um. There just seems to be wonky things that happen for a first time mom. Where'd your toys go? Puppies, where did all your toys go? I put them all back in here earlier. Yeah, did you take all our toys back out? Huh? Did you take our toys back out? Uh, those ones, uh, those toys were kind of dirty, like. I have more toys on the way, by the way, for them, for families to pick out. Because we're running low on toys for families. Look at these. Look at these. Um, but we'll be streaming Robin's delivery. Robin is she, Daisy, Missy, they're all like our little reliables. Um, when Robin goes into labor, she's um, she doesn't have them back to back spitfire like Daisy does. Daisy can deliver eight puppies in 90 minutes. Um, but Robin has more like really like 35, 40 minutes between puppies but she's very consistent. She'll have one puppy and then 30 minutes later, she'll begin pushing and that puppy will be out in five minutes. And then, you know, same thing, 30 minute break, five minutes of pushing and the baby's out. So um, hopefully it's a nice, easy going delivery. I'm curious to take her temperature again to see if it's dropped anymore. She's so uncomfortable though, and she's been so uncomfortable for so long. I want her to just have her baby so she can, so she can just like take a breath, you know? She's such a good girl. Ah, her too. I am gonna miss you guys. I'm sad that like your last week, you've been so busy with everybody else. Hey, R2, who's a good boy? Hi, oh, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Good morning, Carrie. Hi there, Anne. Diana, how are you? Give Kelly a big hug and kiss from us. Tell Enrico we said hi. Oh, yes, and I just want to share, it is um, our moderator's birthday, Lisa Pine. It's her birthday today, and um, God bless her because we are gonna have a very busy day with um, delivering puppies um, who are lucky enough to share a birthday with her. So um, we appreciate that she's spending her birthday with us. Um, and so let's all just try to be kind to our moderators today so that they can make their jobs easy and. Give Lisa a nice easy going birthday. Um, Lisa, we we've grown very close with Lisa. She lives on another continent. Um, and it sucks because uh, I'll be talking to her and I'll be like, I want to see you, <laughs> but it, like we literally can't. It stinks. Oh, Carrie, I'm going to miss Archie so much, too. He is, I'm stuck with him right now. He is such a little sweet pea. I love his, oh, he's got such a sweet little eye and little face. Oh, I love him. So, Susan, um, Susan Wettingale, I just wanted to let you know, in me and Drew's personal experience, 
the boys are actually. The boys are actually clingier than the girls. We find the girls to be um, just a little bit more independent than the boys. Um, <laughs> and of course, that's dependent on you know individual personality situations. Um, Paris, for example, is extremely clingy, and she's clingier, obviously, than like Spike. Um, but we raise them very differently. Paris was raised as an ESA. Spike was raised as a family dog. Um, so dog to be. Um, so they're raised differently. But when it comes to like our puppies and we are raising our puppies up, um, the puppies that we have brought home to be moms and dads, um, like Macchiato, way more snuggly than Spike. Uh, Rio, we, we raised, we brought Macchiato home at 11 weeks, but Rio we raised here, and he is so snuggly. He is very snuggly. In fact, he is more snuggly than Vienna, which is his sister. Um, they're litter mates, and Rio is more snuggly than Vienna. Um, and so if you, if you want a boy, but you're worried about whether he'll be snuggly, you don't need to be worried about it. There's all the three outside. What? I mean, all the three in our country. What's in the country? Allergies. 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 She said there's allergies outside. I thought she was saying Audrey's. And I was like, Audrey. <laughs> Aw, Cindy, I'm so glad oh, Louie gets to sleep in your arms each night. Oh, can I here, can I hold on to you? I guess my cat. Hey there, Valerie. How are you? Who is so cute? Let's see. Nice, well. yeah. These guys have need to we need to clip their little tooty well, nails. Well, you can have a marshmallow. I don't care. That's fine. Come here, Paris. Come here. Can Missy see her puppies? Yeah. Don't let her rock your or else I'm gonna get it. Paris, come here. She's so sweet. And Paris, sorry, Paris can she can say hi to the thing. Paris likes to say hi unless she's in here. She yeah, she, she to, walks out. She doesn't want to. She goes in like, no, never mind. <laughs> Not what I thought it was. Paris, come here. Paris. Hi. 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 Paris, my green
Paris, come here. Paris! Come on, Paris.
Do you have Robin with you? Do you have Robin with you? No. Or, is she outside or inside? Oh, you guys, when we start um, Robin's labor stream, we will take the stream over to Myra's puppy so you guys can, can see them today in the, in the daylight. Um, we can't take the stream over there, but we, we can move the, the other stream around. So um, we'll be sure to show you that. Well, and we'll also take it over to Remy. Um, I was just looking for her and I found her in the bubbly pool in our bedroom. She was in there. She's panting and roughing up the blankets and she's kind of funny because she, her belly is so big and she's trying to take these blankets around and her belly just gets in the way. The poor thing. She looks like a barrel. The family's here! What? The family's here! Oh, my family's over. Yeah. It might be a delivery, Bella. It's okay. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Um, should I, you know, so I'm setting up only for a stream. I'm just going to like schedule it for like four o'clock and then we'll just start it whenever she starts.
I'm gonna always do this. Oh. Mom, was it rain today? No. When, when, when it's gonna be raining. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I want to get cuddles. I don't know if we'll have cuddles. You yeah, have been clear. No, it's like green. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, just, I don't think that we'll have them today. Is it going to be right tomorrow? No. Today we learn about seed. You learned about what? Seed. 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 Oh.
Hey, May. Hey, do you have the square heating pad? Yeah, can you bring it down?
Robin is um, Robin is now in the welcoming pool. She's really comfortable. She's us. Um, and so we think puppies are lining up. She's having contractions. Um, what else? Um, she's pretty. She's pretty close. She's almost there. We um, set up the link for the live stream for her delivery. Um, I'm, I just a video of her, kind of show you guys where she's at. Um, I'm loading it right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna slip it into the live stream so that um, the live stream for Robin, so that when you open that link for the Robin delivery. Um, at least until we start it, the this video will be for you so you can kind of see where she's where she's at. Um, I scheduled it for four, but I don't think it all took until four. Here we go. Um, but I just I scheduled it that late because um, if I schedule like two o'clock and we don't start it until three o'clock, this video that I put in will stop playing it too. And so this way it'll just keep playing um, or be available to play. Um, but I imagine Robin, I think she's taking a nap right now and then she will, um, when she wakes up from her nap, I think she'll probably start pushing up puppies. Well, that's how close we are. Shh, Harris. Paris, stop. This is a silly little video I have. It's a minute and a half long. YouTube is going to take 36 minutes to process. So, I think it actually takes 36 minutes, but it might take 36 minutes. Carrots! Oh, there's our alarm. I'm not getting it. It's okay, it's okay, though. It's okay.
I really can't get it when the phone locks off. B. Oh, let's say tight it. Should have gotten seventy one in, but didn't count it. I look five more you, seconds. You need to set an alarm. Well, I got to try the puppies. Oh, okay. it wasn't an alarm. It wasn't an alarm issue. It was working. Oh, can you take a look? Yeah, take a look at the girl. Ah! Where do you need to put on your headphones? Alright, and the trailer to the Alright. So if you guys um if you check the Link for the whelping stream of Robin. Um, I put it's like a minute and a half video I put in there, um, like a little preview. Not much. There's not much to look at. It's just Robin um, panting and resting in her in her pool. Um, just me talking about what's going on, what she's been doing. So nothing crazy. Just a little, just a quick peek. She gets closer. We'll we'll let you guys know. We'll and we'll start the stream. How do you guys manage to get all your toys in this one little target? <laughs> Easy. So silly.
Um, Mary Ellen, I saw your questions um, about contacting us. So um, if you go to our website, redbarncavaliers.com, all you need to do is, um, so there's some instructions that are incorrect on there. We haven't fully updated it from the way we used to do things. So um, if you go to the either the available puppies page or the upcoming litters page, there will be um, a paragraph of text at the top of each of those. Um, it's the same thing, um, but it basically it just tells you um, to get a hold of us um, and just send like just a brief introduction, who you are, um, especially you know if, if your name is Mary Ellen, um, let us know that it's you, and we'll you know connect that. Um, it's you from the live stream getting a hold of us, um, but just let us know um, who you are and um, you know what what brings you to um, what brings you to us, how you found us. Um, if you have any dogs, just like a little bit, little brief bio is all. Um, so we we screen our families, but I think that's been a little bit misunderstood. Um, we, it's not that we um, screen families in, it's more that we reserve the right to screen families out. And so as long as you get a hold of us and like initiate contact, um, we allow those families to submit reservation requests on reservation day. Um, we just, we don't open it up to everybody like Joe Schmo that knocks on our door from, you know, delivering a package if he sees the puppies and wants to put in a request he can't just randomly um, put in a request it has to be somebody who's previously reached out to us and that's just to help us that way we already have an idea of the families that are putting in for these puppies we kind of know a little bit about them and where they're from um and it also keeps it keeps um puppies from being selected by people who haven't even reached out to us when we have families who have been following us on YouTube and um, are really eager for, for a puppy of their own. And so it just kind of helps keep that organized. But So if you could just send um, a brief message, our phone number is in that paragraph. Um, it's not in the text, like you won't see it written out, the digits written out because of bots. So we made it into a hyperlink. Um, and so I'm having a lot of trouble with um, receiving and sending texts to non-iPhone users. And so if you don't have an iPhone, um, it'll say which which number. It'll, you'll basically just use my husband's phone. Um, but I receive most um, text messages from any phone. I just have to make sure I add Drew to, in order for you to get a text back from me. If I don't add Drew, then it won't go to you. Um, if I add Drew, then it goes to um, the other person with the non-iPhone. It's really bizarre. But um, so you can just send us a message to our personal phones. Um, there's some instructions on there that talk about creating an account. Don't worry about all that. Just send us a direct message straight to us. Um, and we're keeping a, a log of, of names of people who are interested in, the, in a puppy from one of these three litters. Um, and we can send you all of the all the pertinent, um, the pertinent kind of like first line information, the process, um, the prices, um, what we do. Um, I think I even, I was worrying so much about including all this detail and other things. I forgot to mention my texts to families that all of our puppies go home microchipped. Everybody gets microchipped um, before they leave and then the other thing is that they all go home completely up to date on shots um they are they're not old enough for rabies they can't have rabies until they're 16 weeks um but we give their we give both doses of their puppy shots so um when they're about 10 weeks old they're fully protected from like parvo and um those sorts of diseases no days you're not gonna go play with puppies you're gonna be me Yeah, see, you're gonna be mean. See, I know you. Um, but we, I had, a, I saw that a family was worried about um, uh, not knowing whether or not, like, we had approved them. That's why I want to clarify that 
um, you won't hear like, um, congratulations, you've been approved for a red barn puppy. Um, it's safe to assume that, you know, if you're talking to us that we're going to let you um, request to reserve a puppy. We have not run into a situation where we need to outright tell somebody they will not be allowed to pick a puppy, that we won't send one home with them. Um, we've only had that happen on two occasions. Um, one was one was for a very, very like out of the ordinary situation. Um, and then another one was um, the families, the family kept stringing us along for a deposit. They had put in a request to reserve a puppy and then they they said they're gonna pay the deposit and then they're gonna pay the deposit. Um, and by the time they were getting the deposit to us, it was almost time to, we were getting close to pickup week. And so that was a family that we, we told that we were no longer going to send the puppy home with them. Um, so, um, that's, um, those are the only two situations. And so, um, you don't need to be too worried because Cavaliers, it's not like we breed border collies and we need to make sure that you have a home that is fenced and all of that stuff. Um, we, ex we kind of will, we, um, we have enough trust in our families that, um, you know, we're all adults and if families are coming to us for a puppy, um, we have yet to have a family reach out to us that Drew and I look at each other and we're like, what are these people doing adopting a puppy? Um, we've never had a family where we were wanting to um, screen them out. And so, if there's anybody who's worried about um, knowing whether or not they can get one, um, you don't have, you're not screened in that sort of sense. It's more that Drew and I just reserve the right to um, turn down a family for, for any reason, but um, we say any reason just because the, the true reasons when we actually need to screen a family out they're really kind of oddball scenarios that are difficult to um, verbalize. And um, this most recent scenario, we probably never could have predicted. So, um, so um, that's kind of what the screening is about. I should say the screening in and out. So there's, there's not really screening in, it's more of the screening out. Um, but if you got a hold of us, reached out to us, um, like prior to reservation day, then, um, unless we've spoken to you and said, I'm sorry, we are not comfortable homing a puppy with you. Um, it's, you can assume that, that it's okay to put in a request for reservation day. Hi, Cody. My gosh, I can't wait to see how these other puppies fur is going to be. Because Macchiato's got some amazing fur. And so does Robin. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see all little puppy's fur. Hey, Bella. What? Can you come upstairs? Because there's... All right, Aiden, you want to stay right, right, right here? He's waiting. So 
Oh, we're still looking at it. We're still looking at it. It'll probably be a little bit thin, but it's Thank 
big sisters. It was this huge pot in my head. Yeah. I had to go through it. I 
She has a puppy approaching the birth canal. It's still a little early to start. Bella, Bella, well, come back up here. What? Bring those clothes up to your own. When we kind of take a peek inside and shine a light, I can see a sack um, that's starting to head down the birth canal. So we are having puppies. We are on our way to puppies. On our way to puppy town. On our way to puppies. Come to your room, York. I understand that, honey. Come on. Myra, Myra, no, not you. Ah, ah, I don't, I don't. Put your phone, put your phone. Oh, that's so cute.
We get a delivery. I don't know. What are the chances that we go into nuclear war? Uh, like very likely or oh, I, likely? I, I don't think it's very likely. It's like likely. I don't think it's likely. It's possible. Uh, um. Oh yeah, I guess being close, being the closest we've ever been, doesn't mean it's. Now some some people some people like a lot of the doomsdayers. Uh, doomsdayers. Yeah, there's a thing called it's like, an, what is it called the doomsday clock or something like that. And basically, it was a um, thing saying that we're very close to like world-ending catastrophes. And it started out um, because of like uh, nuclear. Uh, like a Russia versus U.S. thing. This you know, started back in like the '60s or the '70s, but they have started to encompass other things like weather phenomenon or AI things like that that can bring about the the end of humanity. But they are saying that we're the closest to midnight, which is the destruction of the human race. Uh, this is the closest we've ever been, and it's things like the current tensions in Europe. Well, but, there's been, historically speaking, there's been a cycle of, of how, like the, how good the world goes, I guess, like, like in crisis, and then it goes back to like, it goes back to like peaceful, peaceful like, like things you'd expect in a dream, and then it, and then you. Go back to like normal where it should be, and then it starts right. to get bad and right. crisis. Then yeah. you keep... Are we are we turning into the crisis mode right now? We are in the crisis. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's supposed to be like around twenty thirty ish. 
Let's be around like 20, 30 ish that we're going to be in the, in the good stages again. Hey, hey, R2. Who's a good boy, R2? You're a good boy, R2. Good boy, R2. Good boy, R2. R2. Okay. She just wants to be in the same room as me. She does. She just wants if there's something blocking her and me, then there's something wrong with where she's at. I need to be with you. Chris, come on. Come on. Wow. 
They have not fought a modern war. Not like we have. But those people are alive now. Or they're not they're not serving the war. Uh huh. But those people aren't alive or they're not serving the war. No, that's not true. Or is it like we know strategies? Bradley's first. Hi, 
and all the ropes. Barely. No. You're going in the kitchen now, Paris. Come on. Come on, Paris. Paris, come on. I think, do you think, oh wait, never mind, I can't ask right now. She's, she's in, she's not down there. She's, she's in, she's in your room. Oh, well, I gotta wait patiently, baby. <laughs>
Still out? Yep. Get the hair. Get the hair. Get a cool box. Message from Amber um, asking it, saying that some people wanted to see the thing that she sent me a couple days ago. I've used it a couple of times and it's way better than I thought it was. So this is it. So it opens up like that, and then when it's on, it kind of has like that little elbow right there. Um, oops, I just turned it on. But there's the charger. Isn't that cool? Right in there. Um, so it just turned on. Let me turn the music off. I don't want to get copyrighted for it. So it has a mute function. But on the inside here, it's basically ear pockets. Um, what's really, really awesome, especially for my migraines, um, is that it gets you right in the temples. Um, a lot of people with migraines, not everybody, but a lot of people have the, the pain in their temples. And so I'm always like pressing on that really hard, but it's really nifty because it follows a certain pattern and then it repeats it a couple of times. And so you get to know the pattern. Um, and it's so like soothing and calming that it puts me to sleep, even if I'm not sleepy, but it also has a heater. So it, it doesn't like, it doesn't get hot. It's just like a nice, comfortable, warm. Um, it's awesome. I love it. I've used it every night since I got it. So the puppies, I think, want to try it too. Oh, now it's vibrating. It has like a, an optional um, vibrating pulsation thing. But that's it. Bella used it. Bella really liked it. <laughs> um, but I love it. Um, I also got something in the mail from Amber. And I just wanted to say thank you real quick. Amber sent me a Mary Kay gift certificate, which was really, really, really nice of you. I wish you wouldn't keep doing that. Um, but I really, really appreciate it. That was really nice. 
I'm actually just running along, Mika. I'm just not going to make up the beat. Okay, that's fine. Amanda, you're so sweet. Sorry, not Amber, Amanda. It was from Amanda. Amber's sister, Amanda. Oh, I like it. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's a little light. Yeah, it, well, it's light compared to what I usually have, so it's going to take a look at adjusting. A little more, yeah. Okay, Phil. Okay, Phil. Okay. It'd be nice to just like do this a few times and then... Uh, With a spoon. But if I drink it with a straw, it tastes different. Uh, it does. Bradley, Bradley. Hey, you can take a shower, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you do. There's a bathroom. Uh, do it now. Uh, right? But you're not having to do it after dinner. Thank you. Do you need a towel or do you have one? Love you.
Teddy, Bo Betty, Banana Panic, Bo Betty, Be My Bo Betty, Teddy. Dexter, Dexter, Bo Dexter, Anna, Anna, Bo Dexter, Be My Bo Dexter, Dexter. No. Do 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 I love it in my hair. I can't talk. I can't talk. Come on, Ted's. Come on, Ted's. Come on, Ted's. Come on, Teddy. Come on, my Teddy. Hello. There you go. There you go, Teddy. Let's get it on. Can I read the videos? You got to have a kid, huh? Oh, yeah, they have to have like... Cody, Cody, Bobo. Dexter, Bobo, Bobo, Thank you. 
Watch on like walkie talkie. Do you have your watch on like walkie talkie? Okay. It'll just be easier to get a hold of you. You know how to do it? Use it? Um, I think so. Yeah, so you turn it. You click it. You're like, you know, turn on the. I think my walkie talkie function is on. Yeah, you select the walkie talkie function. You go to me and then you press it and you, you like, tap it and you hold it. Okay. While I talk? Yeah, while you talk. Just like a walkie talkie.
Has Robert had a puppy yet?
Thank you, buddy boy. You're welcome. Hi. 
Hey, Teddy. Oh, no, Teddy. Oh, no, Teddy. Careful, bud.
I couldn't find my phone.
James right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you.
I wonder what specific thing. Uh, uh, I, wonder, I wonder what specific. I wonder what specific. I know they know it's for me.
cares? No.
Sniffs my breath when she when she decides that decides to come to her and 
Doing that for one thing. Play some hungry puppies. Oh, this is over. Are you trying to get a hold of him? Go have a donut. Bradley! Come have a donut. All right. Well, your dad's being kind. <laughs> oh, I get some really there, right? I don't know. No, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Put it there. It's just straight. Oh, 
Well, they got out. Okay. Well, how do you take this off? In your boss. Wash your face, wash your face, wash your face. Wash your face. Now, can I wear something? Okay. You gotta go to school, Nathan. Nathan? Noticed is that it seems that since Myra has had her puppies, Remy now it's like she they're in the same clothes, and now Remy doesn't mind her. Yeah. Um, Remy doesn't mind Myra anymore. Oh, really? So, like, just a touch cautious, but when we came to the door and French had it, and she's wanted to fix her hair, and then Myra went in the closet and we would like her to smell for her, and her way in her pistol and oh. went with her. and you want pump pump it, or they kind of show them off. Show them off. Yeah, where she like look at somebody, look at my rug, like fighting her in. That's what. Yeah, it's it's a hot tub. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a hot tub. 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 Yeah, it's a hot tub.
What melons? Conversation with the Backstreet Boys song.
Here you go, Pokey. Oh my goodness. Hot guys. Holy cow. R2. 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 Dude, you don't have to be in it. You don't have to be in it. There. There you go. Man. No, R2. R2. Guys. You don't have to get in the Those are nuts. Those are nuts. Yes, yes.
Yeah. So I shaved her off quite a bit with the vacuum and to get a lot of her side hanging fur. And so I trimmed to kind of get a lot of that loose stuff out of the way and trim her up. A what? Yeah, of the night delivery. Are getting more frequent. 
Just reposition each one. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I haven't seen you much all today. Oh, <laughs> 
was Kate.
Silly puppies. Silly, silly puppies. You guys are in such a mood.
And everybody, see you guys tomorrow. All no puppies from Robin yet. But he is like really miserable. So see how it goes tonight. Sleep well, and we will see you guys in the morning.